Hi, Justin with Seaboard Marine here. In this video, we get the prop shaft machine, the keyway, um, set the prop shaft uh, flange, um, the coupler for the gear, and machine that, face that off, uh, get everything dialed in on the prop shaft, ready to go in the boat. And we also show you how we made the, um, customized the hatch a little bit. We had to raise up the hatch using the existing combing. We added four inches to the hatch so that it could accommodate this um, high mount turbo and coolant tank up here. Now, um, a little bit about why we did the high mount turbo. It's a lot of work to get to this point to have the high mount turbo. We had to do a custom boost tube. Um, we had to move the turbo itself. We had to do a custom mount for the tank. But in the end, in the end it's worth it because it just really cleans up the installation. Uh, Tony says it's the best thing that ever happened to, uh, to the V drives in these small boats that weren't really designed for an engine like this to be shoehorned in here. Um, and it really makes things fit by squeezing it all, basically you're squeezing it up instead of out because there's no room down here. You know, if we had to run the exhaust up and over and down, it would just really be tight and it'd be a real piece of artwork. Instead, we have this really clean sweep back. It's only about, you know, 16, 18 inches long of dry exhaust and it turns, hits the mixing bell, hits the, um, the exhaust hose and out, out to the fiberglass exhaust muffler and transom. Um, so it really uh, is a good way to um, engineer these in engines to fit into these boats where space is really limited. So it's a great solution, keeps the turbo up high above the water line and dry where it's happy. And um, just uh, it makes a really nice, nice install. What are you doing today, Corey? Well, we're just checking out the job, see how everything's coming together. We got the engine set in and aligned, and um, we're getting all the instruments buttoned up. Totally retrofitted the uh, the instrument panel, put in all new Cummins instruments. We put a transmission oil pressure gauge in, a couple voltmeters, and um, and uh, we'll get real close to wrapping up the project. Rick, what are we doing? Straightening the shaft for the Albin? Yes, we're going to straighten out the shaft in the oven. Usually the material comes, sometimes it comes really balanced, like within tolerance, like uh, 3,000s, 2,000s, but this one was off about 8,000. So we're going to put a little bit of heat. And so strip. here's our setup. We used yeah. a dial indicator, spun the shaft, and marked the high spots. Mm -hmm. And now we've already actually torched it a couple, couple times. Now we're within about three or 4,000. Then we're going to torch it one more time. Yep. See it coming back as it cools. I'm ready. Okay, let it cool off a little bit. Let's see where we're at now. There it is. That's it. I mean, that's barely wiggling. Yeah, 1,000. Barely moving. The next thing we're going to do is try to make the fit the coupling to the shaft. Usually the shaft's a little bit oversized. So we'll see if it's going to fit or where else we have to send it down. So it won't fit, so it's a little bit oversized. So we're gonna file it down until this thing slides right in. Okay. 